Tim Zhu is at the table right over there, about 12, 15 feet away from us. And, yeah. Um, it's the first time I've actually seen him in person. Okay. And I am um, in awe of the resemblance between him and his dad. That's he is, he's so much a photographic reproduction of his father, uh, at least from this angle. It's yeah. pretty amazing. <laughs> Have you met his brother? No. Nope. Um, his brother's running around too, Nikita. I mean, one, two, three. They look so similar. Yeah. And his brother's a softball. I know his dad was a softball, well, I right? feel a certain poignancy about it because I, I called <laughs> – uh, his father's only fight in this hemisphere yeah. on a night when everybody expected him to wipe out Vince Phillips. It was supposed to be a perfunctory title defense, go right through this guy, start establishing yourself in uh, this part of the world, and boom, Vince landed the one right hand, yeah. a lightning shot. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, worst night of uh, of Costa Zou's career. Sure. You, you were there on the night that he fought uh, Zab Judah as well, though, right? Zou? Yeah. I don't recall that. Oh, you weren't thinking that, that wasn't on I, uh, I think on that was on Showtime. It must have been on Showtime. I think that was on Showtime. Yeah. I, I believe that I only called the one Costa Zoo fight yeah. the night that he got caught by Vince Phillips. When, when, so working now for PPV.com, again, you guys, that'll be Saturday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Working for PPV, do you get ready for the telecast like you would back in the day? I don't prepare in exactly the same way that yeah. I did back in the day. Okay. And, you know, when you're calling blow by blow, uh, you really have to have every single piece of information locked down and, and have an encyclopedic base sure. to feel the, the command and the credibility that you want to have to call blow by blow. I'm not calling blow by blow. I'm um, commenting in a live chat, and it's more a matter of responding with my own history and sensations to what it is I see in front of me. Uh, if I make comparisons to the past from fights that I called, that's something that is interesting to the audience. Uh, they've got a blow-by-blow -blow commentary that they're listening to. You know, they, they bought the live pay-per-view, and so somebody else is doing blow-by-blow. -blow. Yeah. So that's not my job. Yeah. My job is to apply an editorial perspective that's interesting and illuminating and not wall-to-wall. Blow by blow is a little bit more wall to wall yeah. uh, than what I do. Got anything? Uh, I just wanted to ask you how all those years, when a moment's happened in fights, you allow yourself to just stay even tone. I watch boxing now and it's hard to even watch the commentators. Sometimes I want to mute it. But when I went back to you, it's just like you enjoyed. No disrespect to you either. Well, first but of all, you enjoyed it. What a privilege it was. I yeah, mean, sir. when I first. I first called fights on ABC, uh -huh. and uh, I, I was looking at a lot of different fighters on ABC, but the primary piece of content for us at that moment was Tyson. And yeah. I, I called Mike's first five or six television exposures, and that was the heart of the story for us. And then I moved from ABC to HBO. Now, HBO was already established as mm -hmm. the preeminent platform. I moved to HBO because Tyson moved to HBO. Okay. And, uh, you know, I had a had a connection to Mike through uh, ABC, and now HBO wanted me to come over there and call his fights. And, and the ancillary privilege was, oh, I'm not just calling uh, Mike Tyson now. I'm calling Sugar Ray Leonard. I'm calling Roberto Duran. I'm calling uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. Legends. I'm calling all of these other great stars whom I had not previously seen and called. Uh, so I got that that sense of self, mm -hmm. that security, that uh, feeling of advantage that comes with knowing I'm sitting in the most important chair in the sport yes. for, a, for an editorial commentator. I am... I am doing the biggest thing that a commentator can do. I'm going to shake Tim Zhu's hand. No problem. No problem. How are you? No problem. All right. You look so much like your dad. It's eerie for me. It really is. <laughs> Great to see you. Um, but at any rate, you know, in the, H in the HBO chair, every time I sat down, put on that head zone, said to myself, I have a truly exalted position in boxing, and I'm going to, I'm going to revere it. I'm going to honor it. I'm going to make sure that this is always at the highest level at which it can be. So one thing I wanted to portray was dignity, mm -hmm. right? I'm not going to be uh, self-satisfied enough or egotistical enough to tell you that I was accurate and good in portraying <laughs> dignity, but I tried. Uh, and, and I did it on behalf of a very dignified employer. Uh, and what you're referring to, I think, was uh, 
certain security and, and sense of self that came from being in what was very clearly at that time the number one commentary position in boxing. Yeah, no question. Beautiful, no beautiful, question. Beautiful. Uh, happy to have you back in, in Las Vegas. We'll catch up offline. Um, enjoy the telecast with ppv.com. Again, guys, Saturday. Before I get up and go, what's yes, going to happen in the fight, Sean? Tell oh, me. Um, oh. I, I have Tim <laughs> Zhu winning this fight possibly by knockout. I think so, too. I think he's going to be able to time uh, uh, Sebastian Fondora. I think Fondora, Fondora has one speed, one, one, um, one rhythm. And, uh, and he's right there in front of you, doesn't give you any... But, but can any we agree, do you agree with me that Fandora is a uh, a more interesting and and possibly more unpredictable opponent than Keith Thurman would have been? No! No? I think, no, no, he wasn't more unpredictable. Keith was the more unpredictable. I think he's the more exciting fighter. I think with with Tim Zhu and Keith Thurman, we might we may have had some true lows in the, in the fight. This one, we won't get any loss. We're going to get Sebastian doing So what he's he a does. better opponent. He's a funner opponent. Fun, funner fun opponent. Is even, okay. Fun is not even a, wor a word, but he's but, a funner No, but opponent. that makes sense. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. All right. Thank you, Anthony. All right, man. Thank Everyone, you, Sean. Jim Lampley will be Real live privilege. on PPV.com. PPV.com, Saturday baby. night, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Listen, get on that because it's a live chat. You get a chance to to interact with with Jim Lampley and the whole PPV.com crew. So we want to thank Jim for for joining the podcast. Living legend. Right here.